Hi guys, I'm Rick Crawley with Achilles Hill Tactical, back again with another UF Pro Series. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about carving setup, effective zeroing, and optics considerations. All right, with carving setup, two things we want to make sure we're implementing while setting up this carbine and fitting it to our bodies is not fighting human behavior or natural human response. So as I take this rifle off of me, this is how I set up the majority of my carbines for not just courses, but how I've set them up for years. So where I start setting up my carbine is where it connects to my body. The length of pull, where do I place it? All the way out, all the way in, or somewhere in between. In order to identify, I'm going to extend it all the way out, place in the pit of your elbow, and then reach out. If I can manipulate the safety selector switch and find good isolation within my first joint in order to reach the trigger, that is my position. Clearly, this is not my position, so I'm gonna collapse it in and try again. As I collapse this arm in, I can manipulate the safety selector switch and I can find the trigger, but I still cannot isolate that joint. So I'm gonna collapse it in one more notch, and that's about where I had it when I started. As I collapse in, I can get a good dominant side grip and isolate from a singular joint while manipulating that safety selector switch. So length of pull from your stock weld is complete. Now, a lot of the time I get asked, where do you connect your sling? For myself, I've connected the rear attach point of my sling to the lower receiver for years, and I have not deviated from that. For this build, it is on my dominant side, but this is just how I connect it. You can connect it to your buttstock, to the back of the receiver, to the left of this billet receiver, however you would like. All right, now for the forward attachment point for my sling. I'm going to place this as far forward as possible where I naturally grip and control the gun with my non-dominant side grip. I want to allow for enough sling tension for one deployed position. My administrative position is going to be completely collapsed and my deployed position is going to be completely opened. So within this fully deployed position, I wanna make sure this sling is fit to my body. And as I place this sling around my body, collapse the sling, I wanna make sure it's nice and tight to my body. And from fully deployed positioning, I'm able to reach up, grab my rifle as naturally as possible, and present the weapon system with proper sling tension. So with proper sling tension, I'm able to utilize this two-point sling to my advantage by running it over and across my radius bone. As you can see, my forward attachment is just in front of my hand, and as I present this rifle out, the sling tenses up. And as it tenses up, it builds stability as well as assists within the recoil impulse of this weapon. The sling can work for you. It can also work against you. So as I've shown with this two-point sling, it can work for you as an asset rather than just simply existing. All right, moving on from the sling. With our optics, we wanna make sure that we're getting proper eye relief. And as we get proper eye relief, after we've established our length of pull, I wanna get down behind the gun. And as I get down behind the gun, I wanna make sure that I'm not having to stress my neck or tense up or build a non-sustainable position or platform behind this weapon system. Now, with the optics, there's multiple different types of optics out there that you can run from LPVOs, red dots, prisms, and holographic sights. But the one thing needs to be consistent about it, it needs to work. All right, so the biggest thing with optics is know your optic, know the increment unit of measure of adjustment, know how to sight it in, how to properly mount it. All right, now where do I place my forward end lights, lasers, and forward end grips? Again, referencing your natural human response and building this rifle to you, I'm gonna get in my sling. And as I deploy this rifle straight up, I'm now going to take my left non-dominant side hand off and I'm gonna put my head straight down. You can even close your eyes. And as I reach up naturally, wherever my non-dominant side hand falls is where I'm going to be placing my controls and my non-dominant side grip. If I'm running a suppressor, the reason I want my light as far forward as possible is to try to eliminate as much suppressor shadow when I engage the light. As far as your laser, I'd run it at 12 o'clock position, and if you have a backup iron sight, run that backup iron sight that works either forward or behind that laser. One of the questions I get all the time is, 
What length of barrel, what length of rail should I run? And again, that's completely subjective to your choice. For me, this is a 12 and a half inch gun. And when I drive this out, I wanna make sure that I have plenty of real estate for lights, lasers, controls, and make sure you have plenty of real estate to attach any attachments, such as this Alpha Taric from Tacom. All right, now onto effective zeroing. As you can see on the second side of my AHT diagnostics target, I have three effective zeros to be shot at 25 yards. So if I want a 25 yard zero, my point of aim will be this blue one inch dot. And when I have a group within that blue one inch dot, my point of impact, then I would be zeroed at 25. If you want a 36 yard zero at 25 yards of distance, your point of aim is this blue one inch dot. Your point of impact is this one inch square. If you want a 50 yard zero at 25 yards of range, your point of aim is this one inch blue dot and your impact area is this one inch square. Now, after giving you three effective zeros, I don't care what you zero to, just understand your zero and know your holds. Now, how I establish my zero is going to be in the most stable, least mobile position called the prone position. And when I shoot in the prone position, I'm looking for as much artificial support to my position as I can find. So for myself, I'm gonna use a shooting bag. Let's go at 25 yards and zero. All right, first thing I need to do prior to getting down into the prone position with my shooting bag is I need to make sure that this weapon is loaded prior to getting down into that position and then having to load my weapon system after I've already established a good prone shooting position. So before I get down, I'm going to go ahead, drive my gun out. I'm going to adjust my reticle of my optic. So what I'm doing here is making sure that I do not have a large red dot to zero from. I want as much of a refined reticle prior to getting down and starting my zero. Once I've established that my optic is at the right brightness, I'm then going to take my magazine and I'm going to observe which side the round is on. So as you guys can see, the round is on the left side. And as I insert it into the gun, I'm now going to push and pull. If the magazine was not seated, it would come straight out. This is a great assurement that the magazine is seated rather than seating and tapping, not knowing if it is seated or not. Push, pull. From there, I'm going to grab my charging handle, pull it straight back to the rear and let go. Two ways to press check. You can either utilize due to having a forward assist. I can pull back my charging handle and let go. If my bolt carrier group does not seat, I can utilize my forward assist, sending it forward. Another way to press check this weapon system is to take the magazine after I've referenced that the round was on the left side, take the magazine out and now the top round is on the right side. Now this would work both day and night through dexterity. As I reinsert the magazine, push, pull, and I know it's seated. All right, now for me, before I zero, I'm going to come out of my sling. I'm then going to build body and spine alignment with my target that I intend to shoot, grab my shooting bag, and together I'm going to go down to a double kneeling position, set my shooting bag out as I center my rifle between my spine and in front of that target. Make sure that the shooting bag is fully engaged with the rifle and that you have as many points of contact as possible. Now, as I push straight back, I ensure that I have built good sp body spine alignment and I settle behind the gun. As I settle behind the gun, I want to sink my diaphragm down to the ground. And for me, I like to lift my ass up and push my toes into the ground. I then settle back down and immediately start my process of finding my natural point of aim and establishing where my natural respiratory pause within my breathing is. So your natural point of aim is extremely important while zeroing. Your natural point of aim is where the dot or the reticle settles on the target naturally. I do not want to utilize any kind of force or muscle to make sure it's there. Instead, I wanna make sure that my bag is building the most suitable, sustainable platform to establish a natural point of aim without any human force. From here, I want to establish my natural respiratory pause, which your natural respiratory pause is the pause between the exhale and the inhale. So as I inhale, and then exhale, the pause between 
The exhale and the inhale is your natural respiratory pause. That's gonna be the most consistent place for you to start breaking the shot. Now, I'm never telling the gun to go off. As I go through my cycle of breathing, finding the natural respiratory pause, I'm making sure the natural point of aim is set. And as I break the shot, all I'm doing is asking the gun to go off by applying and implementing isolated pressure straight back into the rear without disrupting the sights, the round goes off. All right, after firing three to five rounds, I'm then going to put the weapon back on safe. I'm then going to take my non-dominant side hand that was laying on the gun, not implementing force off the gun to the ground and press up. From there, I'm going to come up to a kneeling position and a controlled underarm carry position and work myself back up to the standing. I'll then go down, check my target, check my group, make any increment unit of measure of adjustment utilizing the quarter inch unit of measure that's provided there on that target for you. And I'll make my adjustments at the target. If I need to reshoot after making adjustments, I'll come back and repeat the process. All right, guys, this concludes episode one of this UF Pro Series. This should not be considered an all-inclusive summary of my curriculum and my training. 